Hey guys, welcome to your products page. Uh, the products page uh, consists of uh, the search bar at the top, uh, some filters uh, that will basically tell you, um, you know, your active listings, inactive listings, archived, and how many are currently filtered uh, for down below. Uh, we are only showing uh, active listings uh, and uh, and listings with broken links, and that's why filtered is at uh, this number here. Um, but then uh, when you search, it also searches your archived listings. Uh, so let's just get right to it. Uh, if you just close down your lister, uh, then we could get a closer look at the uh, products page and how it works. Again, uh, everything is searchable, ASIN. Uh, SKU, source URL, words within source URLs, price, etc., and notes are all filter uh, searchable and filtered uh, within uh, this search bar at the top, and it's super responsive as well. So, if you just wanted to start with like uh, two letters, it will filter down uh, your listings like super quickly. So the search is super powerful here. Again, you can search anything at the top here. Uh, let's move uh, on and about. Uh, if you search for, uh, let's say, uh, a holiday, for example, uh, it'll pull up all the listings uh, with the word holiday in the source URL or the notes or anything else. Um, and then we will continue to filter down. Uh, so we have 77 here. Now we can filter the listings by a whole slew of different things. So let's go through the filters real quickly. Uh, listings without source URLs, uh, no source prices, uh, broken links, uh, you know, resolving at a dead end on the source site, unsupported suppliers, uh, maybe you're listing a product to a supplier that we don't actually support uh, inventory and cost management for, inactive listings, um, you know, inactive listing is a listing that you've uh, quite simply made inactive. Uh, we'll move the quantity down to uh, zero in Amazon and uh, and in OA, um, and it'll remain inactive. Maybe you're uh, making it inactive because it's out of stock for the time being. Uh, we haven't gone around to our second scrape, and uh, and you don't want to sell anymore, uh, so you just shut it down temporarily, and you write some notes that says you shut it down for that reason. Or maybe there's a mismatch that one of your VAs listed one product associated with a different product source URL, uh, and you want to shut it down and ask them to. Uh, amend the source URL and then reopen it back up and make it active again. That's inactive listings. Restricted listings would be um, listings that you've identified as like brands are marking you as like uh, infringing on IP or something like that. And you don't want your VAs to ever list uh, th those products again, at least not those ASINs, um, to those ASINs. Uh, so you would just restrict those listings and uh, and they would show up in our system as restricted. You can, again, filter for them. Archived listings. Uh, listings that are archived uh, will not be tracked for uh, inventory or cost, uh, but they will remain in our system. Um, and, you know, maybe you want to archive listings that uh, you haven't, uh, you listed greater than like 120 days or, um, you know, uh, you know, or yeah, like maybe like 120 days uh, ago and you've never sold. Uh, so maybe you're going to want to archive them uh, because you don't think you're going to ever sell them and, uh, and you know, you want to you wanna keep your listings clean, uh, but you don't want uh, any of your VAs to be able to list to those ASINs again because like it's kind of a waste of a URL or a waste of, a, of, a, of tracking. Uh, so you're going to archive those types of listings. Uh, you could filter for listings with no sales. Uh, listings that have been listed greater than 60 days ago, 90 days ago, or 120 days ago, and active. So uh, again, like if we were talking about that, you know, these things all overlay over the over the initial search, uh, and they're all ands. So uh, let's say like listings with the word holiday uh, and have no sales, um, and were listed uh, greater than 120 days ago. Uh, so maybe there's like, uh, you know, 50, uh, 51 listings uh, that you're going to want to, uh, you know, bulk edit here and archive. Uh, again, these are ands, so no sales and listed 120 days ago and are active. Uh, that might even filter it down even further. So we don't have any active uh, listings that are no sales and are listed over 120 days ago uh, with the word holiday in it. But if you get rid of that, 
then you will see a lot of listings uh, here. Okay, here you have 10. All right, so maybe you might want to archive those. All right, so that's how those filters work. Um, we explained each and every one of them, and we also explained that they're ands. Uh, again, if we wanted to see only active listings, um, only active listings from uh, Walmart, um, we wanted to just search for that and do a CSV export of these, uh, just these listings, um, we can totally easily do that just by filtering here and here and exporting. This is how many you would see on the screen at a given time, and then it's paged after that, of course. Um, and uh, now let's talk about like bulk editing. Uh, so bulk editing is good for setting uh, a bunch of different statuses. So you can click this over here um, and it'll uh, associate it with all of the listings below. Again, if you had any filters in place or uh, you, know, you wanted to bulk edit like only a few items at a time, you would just uncheck and then bulk edit these, right? Maybe you're gonna bulk edit um, listings and change the handling time. So Bed, Bed Bath & Beyond, you see that you have three days handling time for uh, some items and you want to uh, actually change it to four days handling time because you realize that uh, that you're you're missing uh, the shipment days on uh, on Bed Bath & Beyond listings uh, just across the board. So you could bulk edit them here. Uh, you could also do a CSV export of this and then upload them within a template. Let's say, you know, so here you have 1200 uh, listings. Even if you did 100 uh, at a time, you would still have to do it 12 times as opposed to uh, setting the Bed Bath & Beyond uh, filter, uh, doing a CSV export, changing the handling times in bulk across the board, one fill swoop in a CSV, and uploading it back to us on the uploads page. Uh, that might be an easier way to do it, but if it was just a few listings, you could just go through handling time, change it to four, and uh, it will bulk edit all of them. Other bulk editing functionalities. You can delete the product from OA Genius so that you can relist it right above at the lister. Uh, you can delete it from OA Genius and Amazon completely. Um, maybe you don't want to manage that listing anymore uh, in either place. You don't. You just want to pretend it never existed. That's what we, you would use that uh, for. Uh, make listing inactive and active. We just spoke about that before. Uh, if you make a listing inactive, then you have to make it back active uh, if you want us to track it again. Uh, inactive is like a temporary, um, you know, a temporary status, uh, and you might want to look into those like once every. 30 days or something like that and see why they're not active. Uh, maybe change the source URL and now you can make it active again. Restricted, uh, we spoke about uh, for like restricted brands. You're gonna wanna leave those in the system so that no other VAs list to uh, those ASINs in the future. So you can avoid uh, IP infringements. Again, if you wanted to take it out of that status, you would have to mark it as unrestricted. Archive listings, we spoke about uh, listings that you don't want for tracking ever again, but you also don't want people to be able to list to that ASIN uh, again. Uh, on archive listing uh, is just the inverse of that uh, and handling time we already spoke about. Returns export up here next to the CSV export um, is basically for, uh, for uploading into, uh, into Amazon for your edit um, edit like return settings. Um, and so Amazon implemented something uh, where they would auto authorize like returns uh, in, the, in like the more recent uh, history. Um, and that was really messing with, uh, with dropshippers because we couldn't really tell them where to send the product back to and we couldn't control the process. If you export this returns export, we do all the work for you uh, that basically would say, don't uh, don't auto authorize this SKU because we're going to handle the uh, return process on our end. Uh, let it let them reach out to us and uh, and then we'll have to authorize the return and provide them with a return shipping label. So literally uh, a couple times a week, you could just click here, get the returns export and upload it in your uh, return shipping overrides uh, within Seller Central. Very very useful uh, tool and time savers here. All right, let's go through uh, the information um, tab on each uh, on each individual product. Uh, within the uh, product information, uh, you'll see the bundle quantity uh, for the product, which can be amended here. 
uh, the handling time for the product, which can also be amended here, who listed the product, um, uh, that's that's calculated uh, in the user management when you create a different uh, user for each of your VAs uh, then whoever lists the product through the product lister uh, will be listed as the listed by uh, if you upload uh, via CSV then you're gonna have to tell us who listed that product the reason why it's important to have a listed by section is because it helps us to create uh, the sourcing analysis eventually uh, within the application um, which uh, would basically tell you what the performance of each individual sourcer is as compared to uh, the other sources that you have working uh, you'll it'll tell you who needs a raise who needs uh, a push and who needs to be fired uh, each week um, so then we come to the SKU and you'll see the SKU also in the, uh, the information tab um, and then you'll get a history on the SKU as well uh, this is your more brief history. It'll give you uh, all the history on a product. Any price changes or uh, availability changes will be recorded only if the price changes again or if the product becomes available or not available. Those are the two things that are recorded. Um, and you see the more recent history here. And then if you click here, you'll see, be able to view more. Now, if you close this tab out, then uh, we'll go from the left hand side. You'll see the comparison uh, on the products. Uh, so just at a first glance, you could see whether or not uh, your sources have list the matching product. Uh, then you'll have your SKU. Uh, the SKU will open up the product in within Amazon Seller Central. The source URL will open up the source uh, uh, link for the product itself. And that can be edited in line at any time. Let's say you want to switch out for a different source. Uh, you would just come here, click the pencil and switch that out. Handling time uh, can be edited in two different places. Um, again, within the information tab um, or in on a bulk, uh, you know, within the bulk edit. Um, pr source price is uh, the price we're pulling from the source at the given time. If we click through, uh, we'll see that it is in fact $11.99 and we're pulling $11.99. Sales tax is the tax associated with uh, this individual uh, source. And again, we've set that, uh, that tax uh, for the source on the settings page. Shipping is $5.99. Uh, this was either set within the lister uh, above on the initial upload into our system or by the auto assign shipping, um, auto -assign shipping functionality that's set within the settings page. Again, this can be amended at any given time within the application um, and within that uh, column. So this is your built total cost. This total cost gets sent uh, via API to, uh, to AppEagle Informed or uh, via FTP to a repricer of your choice. Uh, that's how uh, the repricer is able to calculate your minimum and maximum selling thresholds um, is by us calculating the total cost at any given time and passing it over to your repricer uh, for automated repricing. Uh, it'll automatically, if you're using App Eagle Informed, it'll automatically uh, set your, your cost to this for that individual SKU within uh, App Eagle, and it will uh, it will then associate a minimum and maximum threshold based off of your preset uh, your preset settings, um, and you'll be off to the races uh, and uh, winning the buy box in no time. The source quantity, um, this will be uh, set in the settings page, uh, unless of course we have less uh, products available on the uh, source site. And you have a depletion uh, setting within the settings page. Uh, you'll be able to look into that on the settings page uh, videos uh, for more information on that. But uh, this is basically should in, in theory be set to your default. Uh, on this account, uh, we see it's set to 17. Uh, by default, so all products that have pro uh, availability in the source site will have a quantity of 17 on the uh, uh, on, on Amazon available. Notes uh, use this at your discretion. Again, works the same way as uh, as the notes in the orders uh, page of the application. Uh, take notes on it. Uh, mismatch of the product. Uh, product is oftentimes out of stock, uh, making it inactive for now. Um, this is how you and your team will communicate about why the products are in certain statuses 
uh, versus others and what's actually going on with the URL. Maybe uh, you'll put in alternate sources uh, into the notes so that if your VAs are ever stuck and uh, and it's out of stock at, at uh, your individual supplier, the, the specific supplier that it was originally associated with, um, they'll click through uh, the SKU, they'll get to the page uh, here and they'll look at the notes and say, oh, but I can order it there. Great. Um, and then we have some stats. So last updated, when the last scrape was, and uh, the date the product was added, and how many sales are associated with it. Uh, this sales column is only viewable by the uh, super admin um, and people who have reporting rights. Um, returns export, CSV export um, are also only available uh, on the admin statuses. That basically covers us for uh, products page. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you.